there. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Podcast, where we want to challenge the people of God to see the realities of their context and reflect on and reformulate concepts such as mission, missionary, mission field, holistic mission, and more. In this episode, we return to a conversation that we had with Obed Manbatkar during the Stop at Iaco Forum on peacebuilding and conflict transformation from a lens of post-colonialism and indigenous Christianity. Listen and learn with us about reconciling East and West, life and legacy of Mahatma Jyoti Bafule, and the hope for OBCs in India. Good morning, welcome. I'm here with Owen Manwatkar, um, and we are talking about uh, reconciling East and West, life and legacy of Mahatma Jyoti Bafule, and the hope for OBCs in India. Um, Obed is a multilingual subaltern Christian scholar. Um, he's a PhD research scholar at Sam Higginbottom University of Agriculture, Technology, and Sciences in Allahabad, India. He's native to Nagpur, a uh, city in India where he worked uh, for over a decade in various Christ-centered caste reconciliation movements after earning his bachelor's in theology at Punjab Bible College. His work and scholarship is focused on India's OBCs or other backward castes, which remains one of the most oppressed groups, not only in the Indian subcontinent, but within the world and global church. Obed is now residing in Chicago, Illinois with his wife, Bailey. Obed is a regular guest lecturer on the topic of world religions and gospel communication at North Park Theological Seminary where his wife, Bailey, works as an interim director of admissions. When he's not working, Obed loves to sing, play harmonium, and explore the Chicago um, area and its diverse neighborhoods. So we're excited to be with you today, Obed. Greetings and welcome. Thank you so much, Tori. All right. Well, we're glad you're here. And I will just go ahead and, and get us started off with a question and then open it up Um I'm, I'm curious because something that we know about you from your bio is that you've worked for over a decade in Christ-centered past reconciliation movements. Can you share with us what this looks like? How do you go about the task of caste reconciliation? Hmm. In, in short, caste reconciliation, uh, in, uh, so as you have already mentioned about my career and uh, how it began, so when uh, God called me for his ministry and uh, I, uh, I went to seminary, I graduated from seminary, bachelor's of theology, and then uh, I uh, was called to reach the unrich, you know, like that's the, okay, reach the unrich, so that's uh, missionology, mission. I researched, uh, I started researching who are the most unapproached people with the gospel and I found out these are the OBCs and uh, there is a huge gap between church and OBCs. So I, my hometown, Nagpur, is the central hub of 370 plus denominations in India. So every denomination, Christian denomination I'm talking, I researched every, 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 uh, every means like, sorry, it will be more generalizing. I researched around 300 denominations, evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, whatever, whatever you call, none of them has any calling for OBCs. Many of the officers didn't have any idea who are these OBCs. So then I was, when I was uh, uh, discerning like, uh, God, well, what do you want me to do? And uh, I found out there's one organization called Truth Seekers. Uh, uh, international and I joined that organization. So um, uh, then uh, in 2017, I migrated to Chicago and all. Uh, then I got married and I'm now uh, teaching here. But uh, but there is there are there are very few small small organizations who do something as like Mercy Ministry something. But caste reconciliation. This is the movement as a movement as a uh, as a post-church planting movement uh, or post-justice movement. This is the biggest movement and uh, there is no hope. So I started working and how does it look like is simple. So what we did is in 2010, we got, a, we got this vision of uh, uh, Ambedkar, Dr. Ambedkar. He wrote Annihilation of Caste. Like... We have to dismantle the caste system. In 1936, he wrote that. 
and uh, so how and what we realized is that activist people they start try to abolish the caste destroy the caste so when you destroy when you hammer uh, the the stone it it just spreads you know it's it spreads into particles so that's what has happened when you when you hammer the caste it it spreads into sub caste so uh, god uh, in 2010 i believe god he gave us the vision of caste reconciliation so we there was no reconciliation agenda in any other movement in civil rights movements in india because they are not caste oriented so uh, so as a christ story in it there we came up with the uh, caste reconciliation and manu annihilation manu uh, means manu smriti which propagates caste system so manu annihilate the manu uh, which which you believe in the, the scriptures and uh, reconcile in christ so so what we did is uh, this is how the caste system look like you have seen the presentation but brahmin kshatriya vaishya and shudra and, and these are ati shudra so shudra are obcs and ati shudra jab dalit and outcast and tribals so this is uh, this how caste system looks and we we what we did is we we approach the obcs with the gospel and and we try we we try to do this caste reconciliation <laughs> you know and uh, the, if we do this it looks beautiful <laughs> no and after doing this what will happen the kingdom of bali raja is what kingdom of god is what like when this happens this is like reconciling 90% of the population these are just 10% of the population when this happens automatically this will come this will come and this will come and this is what it looks like and you know what this is this is where jacob who became israel he this is the stone <laughs> very let down and he named the stone as bethel <laughs> that is house of bread so this is bethel of for india and this is how caste reconciliation will do and this is what caste reconciliation looks like when you reconcile kingdom of god arrives <laughs> but church uh, church has done what i'm saying i'm uh, my critique on church is church has done work in dalits but the narrative of the church uh, the uh, the language of the church is brahmanical dalit is an oppressed most oppressed person dalit is full of dalit is already welcome he will embrace you where if he wants to get out of the system he is more suppressed so he wants to get out but the obcs uh they uh they don't understand the language of the church because church uses brahmanical languages the notion of god uh in hindi or marathi or you call a, a, any other languages the in hindi there is a word called parmeshwara in uh, for god but parmeshwara is the name of vishnu and vishnu who takes incarnation to kill the, this people so if a christian pastor approaches oh brother repent parmeshwara this god loves you and obc obc replies why do i need to come to your god which hates me which takes incarnation to kill me so church church is a narrative uh, as i explained in my presentation it's since the beginning since apostle thomas i'm saying i'm not talking about british colonialism it says the beginning is with the brahmins and church has a uh, church uh, the caste occupied the church uh, church uses their their language and it's not 21st century and church is still uh, and it's not that church is not aware of it many evangelical churches partnered with us and we we did a lot of uh, caste reconciliation programs and all but that was just a, st- a stage talk <laughs> that was just an event you know Uh, one one uh, convention on crusade and and just end of the story <laughs> so uh, there there is no uh, active movement because evangelical agenda stands for winning the soul and uh, uh, soul winning soul winning and even today if you see india uh, the farmers are protesting uh, 
uh, it's all over the world now globally but how many pastors do you see going physically visiting and praying for them <laughs> no one so uh, because church is uh, church doesn't know what their agrarian culture is whole bible is agrarian and uh, bible relates with agrarian culture indian christian theology doesn't resent doesn't resonate none of the single indian christian theologian is from agrarian background none of them talks about uh, farming or herding or anything bible talks about it uh, you see ruth is a uh, ruth is working in the fields you know in old testament you see uh, you see david is a shepherd you know jesus says i am a shepherd but indian christian theologian uh, most of them are brahmins and what you have uh, one one person called gandhi who is being uh, propagated as modern christ you cannot touch him but he is all opposite <laughs> uh to whatever we think who he is he is he was completely now it's like getting exposed so so cast reconciliation looks like bethel is a kingdom of god and uh, when we reconcile the caste and so wonders happen and i have seen a uh, caste reconciling by my own eyes i have done it 11 years and so it's powerful uh it's not about uh, making people come oh brother you are sinner just repent and come to my church no no, no. <laughs> that that's not the way <laughs> that's not the way we are already sinners god has punished us to be shudras <laughs> for the obc you know god has already punished me you no know? he has created me from his feet so why <laughs> why should i uh, why should i care so that is not a gospel for the obcs obcs is uh, the gospel for the obcs is hope jesus gives you hope jesus dignifies you uh the most powerful part of caste reconciliation ministry was foot washing we would go uh uh from i mean i used to host a team so teams would come to from united states and other parts of the countries so we used to take teams we used to go in the slums and the villages where manual scavengers uh, sanitation workers and all dalits or obviously they live and people from united states when they used to wash their feet in the name of jesus like we we come here we are not here to convert you to christianity we are here to dignify you and just uh, wash by washing their feet looking uh, in their eyes and says jesus loves you you are worthy who's no one washes obc's feet <laughs> people wash brahmin's feet and uh, from the brahmin's feet no that water that the saying that oh, the the dirty water from brahmin feet is a nectar they drink it that's pathetic system in brahmanism but uh, but obc's feet no one washes so so we used to communicate in that way that people from the most powerful uh, nation are coming to your country in your village in your slum and washing your feet Uh, and that's that would give them hope and that would say oh my goodness wow yeah. yeah i have never heard so that is how cast reconciliation looks like and it's not just mere talks we have to live it in, and we have to go in practical and do it no yeah. tori if you want to plan any time we can we can <laughs> we can we can, uh, we can make a trip to india when it's covid ends <laughs> oh but i have i have a couple of follow up questions if that's okay sure sure my question you know when i think of the word reconciliation uh and i try to reconcile that reconcile that with the word annihilation which is what dr eben car used the annihilation of caste you're talking about class reconciliation and and it, it sounds the 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 words sound very different but i think you're after the same thing and so can you help can you help us connect those two words annihilation of caste reconciliation of class of caste yeah. hmm i think uh, what happens is no uh, annihilation of caste and the post ambedkar era it came up with the agenda of abolition of caste and so what happened is which annihilation which related to abolition to destroy everything and so if you destroy we because it has become a part of the culture now yeah so you cannot <laughs> you cannot do directly hammer it 
if you hammer that notion the person will get angry so <laughs> so uh, so basically if you if you critique any uh, cash dt the hindu you know he is an anti hindu like he will come up with oh he is being hindu phobic or something so annihilation uh, what happens is the uh, hinduism is not a religion in the first sense it has been made to believe that it's a religion but it's a system uh, which has a layer of covering up of, of religion and they hide in that identity hindu identity hindu society as such does not exist in in the world at all hindu culture hindu tradition does not exist it's all collection of castes so when when you when you uh, come up with the agenda of reconciliation the reconciliation agenda is purely biblical agenda jesus is the only unique figure who come up, came up with the agenda uh, in the entire history of human kind none of them and none of the prophets or whoever so that makes it this unique reconciliation the word reconciliation there is mm-hmm. no word for reconciliation in hindi and any languages in hindi really really there is no translation <laughs> so that makes it more unique uh, uh and uh, there is no word for resurrection there is no word for resurrection uh, reconciliation so annihilation uh, what happens is if you if you uh, uh, in the beginning i said no while i said story uh, once one like cast is like a stone if you break that stone with the hammer mm-hmm. what will happen it will it will break into pieces so when you annihilate cast you break the notion of caste what it it spreads into sub caste right so there are 8500 caste and each caste has 12 and a half sub castes why 12 and a half the half one is for eunuch so basically eunuch or uh, uh, sorry if that word is right eunuch or transgender or whatever you say no uh, lgbtq or something so the half word is for lgbtq so even lgbtq has a caste <laughs> mm. even women has a caste women uh, women were not created in the caste system by their god uh, women don't exist in the caste system okay so but women who are born in that those caste they are like female surpluses so they basically uh, adopt their, their behavior caste behavior so there are upper caste women there are lower caste women dalit women obese women and there are every women has a, another story like there are white women black women and other uh, so 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 annihilation of caste uh, does sounds good but if there is no agenda what uh, what will happen after breaking the caste okay where to go okay that's really that's reconciliation very, that's a, that's a very um thank you that that's very helpful yeah. because i no. because i yeah but the two words are so different annihilation yeah. and reconciliation yeah um and it doesn't mean the same thing it 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 means because you know in my mind you annihilate that's like a that, yeah that's a good picture you know a hammer out to the rock of, of cast and it just fragments yeah and and then when i think of reconciliation you're trying to you're not trying to put that rock back together <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to acknowledge the casts i think and let me see mm-hmm. you're trying to acknowledge them but then reconcile them in christ mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, is that what i'm yeah. hearing see this is see again I, if i have to picture as no this is how it is no upper upper lower 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 yeah. this is how it is yeah. what i'm trying to do is i'm making it this so this and this becomes cross <laughs> cross <laughs> yeah okay so I, yeah so that's why I, at the feet of the cross when you come so that gets reconciled so that's the message of reconciliation for me <laughs> good yeah i will go ahead um because i think this this also kind of digs in a little bit more with with some of the questions that you're were asking al um we uh, um in which we learned that um some people who um are ex- oppressed and excluded by the caste system um to those people christianity appeared as a way to gain some upward mobility such that today there are christians who would rather not question the system because they've gained from um becoming christians some amount of power 
Uh, I wonder if you can just kind of comment a bit on this and, uh, and maybe the question is here, how can you make the Indian freedom um, or reconciliation from this within this caste system? Hmm. Well, to be honest, it will, uh, if I answer this question, it will hurt the sentiments of evangelical churches. <laughs> Okay. Because my critique is on directly on Pauline methodology. And <laughs> I love Barnabas more than Paul. <laughs> and so uh, Pauline, I, I salute Apostle Paul, to be honest, his mission and all. Uh, his, his dedication and all, I salute him. Uh, but uh, but when we come to methodology, I don't uh, what the damages, uh, what it has been perceived like the damages were done. Even the uh, Pauline way is approaching the elites, and and so that like uh, because Paul's network was was the top leadership with the top leadership. Huh? He would go visit the kings, emperors, and give them gospel, and and they would uh, uh, communicate to the society. And this would happen. And that strengthened the agenda of colonization and afterwards, Constantine and all the way we know that story. Same thing happened in dramatization. That's the thread which joins them. Apostle Thomas comes with the same agenda. He thought he would communicate with the most powerful oppressive people, give them gospel, and so uh, they can uh, they can communicate to the uh, the others. No, so basically, generalize. You know, who? What is India? Hindu country. Who is the boss of Hindus? Brahmin. <laughs> so, reach out to the Brahmin so that he can. But actually, that was an oppressive system, and uh, so Brahmin became more oppressive. And most of the beneficiaries of color diversity today are Brahmins. So Kerala top leadership, which comes from Marthoma, Jacob, by this. Uh, uh, Syrian and all this, uh, and then few charismatic movements and uh, Pentecostal movements and these, they're all top leadership. You name any big shot leader, you will find he's, a, he's an upper caste, Malayali, uh, Keralaite, uh, Brahmin, and they don't talk about the caste biases. Uh, church, Kerala itself, the churches in Kerala itself practices caste system. The Dalit Christians have different graveyards. They have different symmetries. The Dalit convert Christians and the Brahmin convert Christians, they have different symmetries. They don't intermarry. They demand dowries. They practice dowry system till today. <laughs> so uh, the original church, if you, if you try to uh, reform the original churches and all, there is no thing. We have to come up with a new way of uh, agenda. And uh, yeah, I think like we, we stand with the agenda of conversion as an evangelicals, but, uh, but I think conversion should not be the primary goal. The main focus is reconciliation. Jesus has only one mission, reconciliation. And, and how, can, how can I love my neighbor if, even if he is not a Christian? Even if he doesn't embrace Jesus? <laughs> No, you know what I'm saying, and so uh, this the this agenda of uh, reconciliation and the uh, the way we perceive and how the church will do. I don't think the church is trying to understand their need. There is a huge gap. This gap should be coming up, and uh, things have happened in the past. Uh, we tried to educate the churches. What churches do is they they come up with uh, their uh, picky agenda, no? And so their <laughs> churches like okay, uh, okay. Now I have learned about OBCs. Now I am the OBC expert, and I will do and plant churches in them with my own. That's not gonna happen. The whole structure of theological structure needs to be changed. So so church is already aware of it. They know uh, we have educated now. Few evangelical churches are talking about OBCs, OBCs, and all that, but uh, uh, but no one, no one, no one is coming up with that uh, attitude that how we can 
uh, reconcile the caste uh, uh, and uh, how can in Jesus' way, the way Jesus wants, no? who is not white <laughs> in the first sense. So uh, the reconciliation in Jesus' way. So church has no agenda and church uh, church thinks in their boxes. No, They have one box and they want to think in that way, this way, straight. Uh, I'm trying, what I'm to explain to the church and in, on this platform of infirmary, that we need to broaden our lenses more. Because world is not just black, white, and brown, and Asian, or something, 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 something. It's more, more, more. It's more than that. No? There are, there's more beauty of God, uh, which need, which we don't know. And so, colonialism is gone, no, in India. We have already decolonized in 1947. British Arabs are gone. No. So, now what's remaining? Yeah, this Brahmanization. Now, Brahmanical colonization has happened. <laughs> It's already there. We have we are witnessing that, and there is no agenda of reconciliation. The problem is there is no notion of repentance in in the caste based system. A Brahmin has no idea that he is a Brahmin. Why he is a Brahmin? And he has he what is taught is living a lie. Like I'm born from a mouth of God, and so I can suppress others. That's my religion. That's my caste duty. So even the love of Jesus Christ uh, didn't, uh, didn't change that. So you, even, a, even if whole Dalits become Christian, even if whole OBCs become Christian, they will carry their caste <laughs> with them. So making Christians is, uh, is not a thing. Oh, come to my church, get baptized and... <laughs> and be my member. No, 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 no. That won't happen. Uh, I'm planning to, uh, my view is rebuilding the group, this church. You know? Church is not just that building and all. We, numbers and all. That is building the, recycling the humans uh, in the, uh, on the global platform of Jesus who is reconciled. I hope that's answering the question. Can you say more? I, I'm I'm very curious about the figure of Bali Raja huh. as the Christ figure. Huh. Uh, I know that that is not universally accepted or or uh, accepted by Christians in in India. Uh -huh. um, can you say more about the uh, Bali Raja? Yes, say more about about that about him uh, as a Christ figure. Uh, Bali Raja, uh, uh, as a Christ figure, is basically what Fule narrates with the allegory, the way Paul narrates with the allegory of Melchizedek. You know, in, a, in a Melchizedek allegory, where Paul does it in a, a book of Hebrews. I think that's the author is Paul. I don't know who is the author of Hebrews, but I... 100% believe that's... Anyway, so the author of the book of Hebrews, he writes, uh, uh, he or she writes uh, about Melchizedek. And so uh, that most high priest Abraham who gave tithe to the Melchizedek uh, from where he comes from, no one knows. So he's an unknown person. And so that's how Fule narrates in a, in a Melchizedekian uh, allegorical way that there is a, there was Bali Raja. Okay, fine. That he's in the tradition from north to south. We have a we uh, and it's not just a mythological story. You know, we have cities. We have Mahabaleshwar in Maharashtra. We have Mahabalipuram in Kerala uh, in uh, in Tamil Nadu. Uh, we have Baliya in Uttar Pradesh. In North. So there are Bali Raja stories in oral tradition everywhere from North to South. And he directly relates, and people have not forgotten him at all till today. He still remains in the memories that in his kingdom there was justice, peace, and harmony, and everyone were equal. That's the kingdom of equality. Uh, that was thing. Not monarchy. I'm not trying to glorify monarchy here. 
Baliraja was not a uh, like not a kind of monarch who would suppress others, but he was a unique king who 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 didn't had any. He who lived in a common house, who was very common, lived like a common person, and uh, but he has. Uh, he was righteous, he was just uh, and uh, justice lover and all, and so uh, in his kingdom there was no discrimination. And when Brahmins, when the Aryans uh, community, they invent, they invaded India three thousand five. Uh, there's this Indian subcontinent. So, so fully relates with that story that this is not an incarnation of gods and goddesses. They are Brahminical. They are Brahmins. Uh, the Aryans, uh, their ancestors. So they took Baliraja, they invaded this land and they uh, they made this story of my myths. So seeking the truth behind the myths, that's the goal of, uh, that's that's what Fule does in his book, Slavery. In traditions, in Raksha Bandhan, they said that this brother sister festival, actually that's not. You know, the red thread, the thread binding, the, a Brahmin, on every Raksha Bandhan, binds a thread on OBC, uh, uh, chanting a Sanskrit mantra. Yen Baddo Baliraja Dhanavendra Mahavan, Tentvaha Prati Padamanami Raksha Machal Machal. It means that I bind you the way I bounded your king. Be my slave forever and ever. So that's what he chants in Sanskrit. And he calls it as Raksha Sutra, that this will this is for your protection, actually, he interprets it. But actually, that doesn't mean that. So it's already there. We we did thread cutting ceremonies many times. No, we cut off the threads of many people. Like get out of the slavery. So uh, uh, this has been this practice is still there in India, and North India. So Fule says that the Baliraja whom you are waiting for, Fule directly comes up with the uh, narrative. Baliraja whom you are waiting for, are he's not. In, in your imaginations, he already came, but you don't know. No? He already came. He liberated the whole world. And so that's a prophecy. And he says that those are the people of Bali. He, he, he used to call a, a Christian missionary, good people of, good Christian missionary. He used to call the people of Baliraja of the West. <laughs> so he said the people of Baliraja of the West will come and uh, give you the gospel, gospel of Jesus Christ, and they will liberate you. So there, there comes with agenda like, okay, we are all one, and Jesus reconciles, and Jesus uh, is the Bali Raja of India. Christians don't accept. Christians, I have. <laughs> why not? Why, why are Christians not accepting that? Because it sounds very because sounds very because Christians because Christians want to. Uh, Continue with that uh, uh, Brahminical scripture. Christians says, see, Indian Christian theology, that's what I'm saying. There is no theology of OBCs. What is this generalization that Indian Christians say, okay, Hindu tradition? There is nothing like Hindu tradition. But Indian Christian theology, okay, uh, how to approach Hindus and blah, blah, blah. And uh, there is one tradition called De Nobili tradition, if you go to Robert De Nobili tradition. Robert De Nobili was a Portuguese person who came to India and he was Brahmanized. No, they, they gave him Janeu, became home. No, no. And the interpretation of Indian Christian theology is Jesus is a yogi kind of figure who sits under a tree meditating and all. That's not Jesus here. Yeah. Jesus is a carpenter, hardworking laborer. You know? No. He, 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 he is uh, smashing people in the temple. <laughs> he, he is working hard like a carpenter. No, uh, He's talking like I'm a farmer, I'm a shepherd. No, Like that is... Uh, the hardworking agrarian, he relates with that culture. Indian Christian theological interpretation itself is Brahminic. There Jesus only sits under under a tree, does yoga, yoga and something, <laughs> and sits idle whole day. <laughs> there Jesus doesn't walk around at all. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so fully relates with the, uh, the uh, kingdom and kingdom of Baliraja, kingdom of God, he he combines with uh, these two, and uh, so yeah. Very helpful. That's I. I hope I have answered your question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Well, I think we probably have time for, for one more question. Um, I have one, and I, I think I, it would be an interesting way to close. Um, mm -hmm. Obed, are, are there any movements or practices going on today? I mean, you've, you started sharing some, um, the feet washing, the cutting of the threads, um, but others that give you hope for the dismantling of, of the oppressive structure, power structures and bringing about reconciliation between the castes. And, and if so, can you, can you share a little bit more about these? What's bringing you hope for, um, for OBCs in, in India today? Uh, well, hope for OBCs in India, Jesus. <laughs> but uh, I don't, uh, because of, uh, See, see, it's been like now six, seven years. This, this government came in power, and uh, and since then, all the movements and every Christian mission is in trouble. So even we had terrible lockdown, and all Christian missions were working among the people, and they stopped their fundings and all. <laughs> so th this government is uh, fascist government, you call it, and so the hope is. Uh, Right now, the two generations, they have radicalized. They are polarized and they, they are killing people. They are, Christians are being persecuted in uh, India. And, and these, are, these are not Brahmins. These are not Baniyas. Upper castes don't do that. They radicalize these OBCs. And the OBCs are doing this. Recently, day before yesterday, a Muslim boy was, uh, was lynched in the temple because he went to drink water. He was thirsty, young Muslim kid. But he wears uh, some hat and all. So the OBC, radicalized OBC, I'm talking about the agrarian person, a cow herder, uh, a buffalo herder community guy. He saw that and oh, he, he is Muslim. And so that's why he lynched him. He bit him. Uh, why you came in my temple? Because you eat cow. Now, who gives that agenda? This is all media and all. So they, they right now, uh, media and uh, even Christian missions, Christian missions play defensive game, you know, like defensive things. So they are uh, right now, I only can pray. There is, there is no movement right now active for doing caste reconciliation things. Uh, but there are protests happening in India. So unless and until... Uh, this current government goes. Uh, right now, there is a. I cannot say anything because all missionary activism has been mm -hmm. shut down. You cannot have open air meetings. You cannot have uh, uh, anything to talk. Even you cannot talk about. Uh, if you talk about Jesus, oh, again, they are they are making anti conversion laws too right now. So that will be more tough in the future. So uh, that's why uh, we have to come up with the new narrative, new dynamics. And my hope is uh, there are secret movements happening. My people who dis uh, I discipled uh, with the grace of God. So they are already working there. Uh, they have their missions, uh, a small, small activism going on, secret activism. Mm -hmm. Closed door uh, meetings and all that; those are happening. So, so Jesus is not finished yet. No? This governments come and governments go. Jesus, uh, no, Trump came and gone. So, <laughs> Jesus remains Jesus. <laughs> no. So, uh, go governments, governments cannot stop. And uh, my hope is, whenever such fascist governments came in power, revolutions happen. You know, Nero. There was Nero in the past, and he was killing. He he killed apostles and Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, and all these people. But revolutions happened. No? The whole world uh, witnessed the glory of Jesus, and uh, uh, persecutions happened. Uh, gospel spread. So, uh, so hope is there. There is there is. It's not that nothing is happening. Things are happening, but in secret we don't know because it's not been shared in media. So. Uh, there is hope, and uh, uh, and hope. My hope comes from the Lord, and a person is never alone. Uh, 
a person who, who's who a Christ follower is never alone. You know, he's the one with the one. You know, and uh, God is always with that person. And uh, people are working, uh, thinking about, and we are still in the discussion. People keep calling me, uh, how to do this, how to do that, brother. Just tell me. So uh, we we uh, young young generations. Uh, who are disciples in the Bali Raja and in this context, they are already working. And so uh, we already have a de-Brahmanized New Testament. Uh, so uh, they, uh, we, we de-Brahmanized that uh, 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 with, with NIV, uh, so bilingual. So NIV plus de-Brahmanized version is already in the market. So people are reading the Bible and people uh, are coming to the Lord. In newest way, which uh, which Christians cannot imagine, <laughs> and because God is uh, you no know, to quote Archbishop Desmond Tutu, God is not a Christian, and other provocations. <laughs> so God remains God even if He has worshippers or not, and so uh, the hope is uh, God and God of the Bible, and it's not finished yet. Well, thank you, Ovid. It's been really interesting to listen to you for this um, short time that we have together and wish we had a bit more. Um, There's a reason we invited you to be part of um, helping us to see the, um, the a decolonized, and uh, you've introduced a new word to us, to de-Brahmanize um, our faith. Um, to look at it from post-colonial lenses, indigenous lenses, uh, and to uh, to see that the God we serve is not a Christian. I love that. But the God we serve is the God of this entire world. And um, God expresses God's self in so many different ways. Um so I'm 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 reeling with all kinds of of pregnant thoughts, um, and I um, I look forward to uh, having more conversations with you since we teach at the same institution. So thank you very much for stimulating our thoughts. That's perfect. Thank you all. Thank you, Obed. Thanks for being here today, um, and it was wonderful to talk with you all. I hope you have a good rest of your day. From greetings from Peru. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the platform you prefer. If you think this could be helpful for someone you know, please share it with them. The best compliment we can receive is a referral to someone else. See you next time.